From the Samsung Production Studios in the heart of Hazleton, Pennsylvania, it's your News 13. Brought to you by SSP TV and the Standard Speaker. Today's primary election acted as a practice run to prepare for the November general election by asking all voters to show some sort of identification. The response from those who headed to the polls, which was very low today, is coming up right now live at 5. But first, another bank robbery, this time in West Hazleton, and it's number three in just over a week. Good evening and thanks so much for joining us, everyone. I'm Kristen Bozinski. Well, the third bank robbery in eight days' time, and this time in the borough of West Hazleton. And we're being told it looks like it was the same person who committed the robberies in Hazel Township at the PNC Bank last Monday and the holdup in Hazleton at the Choice Credit Union this past Friday. And a twist in the story? is that the suspect is a prior MinSec resident. News 13 just back from the Citizens Bank at McKenna's Corner in West Hazleton. The bank was robbed by a white man who got away with cash around 4 o'clock this afternoon. No one was hurt, but police immediately reviewed surveillance video and confirmed that today's robber is believed to be 33-year-old Sean Kelly of East Chestnut Street in Hazleton. State police earlier today released his name, saying he was the prime suspect in the PNC holdup. Troopers went to his home earlier today. Kelly was not there. Police returned there minutes after the Citizens Bank holdup to look for him again. And so far, we have not heard that Kelly has been located. Hazleton City Police investigating the Choice Credit Union robbery last Friday have not confirmed with us that Kelly is the suspect in that robbery, but we have heard reports that Kelly matches that robber's description as well. West Hazleton Police Chief Brian Buglio talked with the media minutes after today's holdup. Nobody was injured, um, however, uh, the, the MO was the same as all the other robberies. Um, pushing him in a little envelope across the, the counter, asking for the money, saying he had a gun. He didn't show a gun, however, uh, he did say he had a gun. Did he mask his face again? On uh, this one, he didn't mask his face. He had a hood up with a hat on, um, so you could actually see uh, his face on the video, which was a very clear identification of him, and the trooper positively identified him. Actually, multiple troopers identified him. This is just uh, another uh, show of how great work in, in departments working together to uh, apprehend the, the criminals. We, we also know that the individual that did rob the bank and, and rob the other two banks, um, he is a product of MinSec. He was released back into the Hazleton area um, from MinSec, and this is what we get out of MinSec. We get him coming in here committing violent crimes in our area. I, I anticipate probably um, he's being very brazen at this point, and I anticipate probably we are going to see maybe another robbery or two until we actually catch him owners that own businesses around here? Um, at, at this point, I'd be very vigilant. You see somebody coming in, be very cautious of them. Um, if there's anything suspicious at all, call the police. Um, you know, all the agencies in this area know about this and are more than willing to, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll come out there and we'll deal with it as we have to. Okay, now Kelly was wearing a baseball cap and had his hood up, but he did not cover his face this time and was wearing jeans and a brown or black jacket. He did flee the bank on foot. If you know where police can find Kelly, dial 911 immediately. Now, there is new information coming into our newsroom pretty much by the minute here tonight. Uh, we know that police just got done searching the area near the Jumbo China Buffet in Hazel Township, right off of Route 309, where they suspected he may have been, uh, possibly may have been seen in that area. We're now being told that they may have located him in the area of Alter Street. Uh, we have a crew going there now, so we will continue to keep you updated as this story continues to unfold and the manhunt continues for Sean Kelly tonight. Now back to our other top story. Can I see some identification, please? That was the popular question voters were asked as they headed to the polls today for the primary election. Although it was a dry run, were voters prepared? News 13 <laughs> headed to the polls in Greater Hazleton to find out if voters had their identification in hand. Today's primary election day, and although it was generally a slow day at the polls, workers tell us almost everyone came prepared. Today's primary was used as a practice run to prepare for the November general election. By asking voters to show their IDs, it gives them time to adjust to the new identification rule and prepare to select a president. 
So how were they feeling about this new law that will soon take effect? I think anything that keeps anyone from voting is really a bad thing. So I'm not really for the uh, new voter ID. Well, I imagine that it's, uh, you know, to prevent voter fraud. And voter fraud is a, is a big problem in the United States, and it's, it's corrupting, um, you know, our elections to a large extent. And I think it's important that they're doing this. I think it's a really good move. I think it's going to hinder a lot of our senior citizens, a lot of them that don't have driver's licenses, they don't have... Uh, the proper ID, that, that I think will be your problem there. In order to vote, to put people in office, for to get the government that you want, you should have people show identification so they can vote. I think it's a good idea. You should, to prove you're registered, you should have to have proof that you're a resident. There's too many shady things going on. Personally, if you know the person for like 30 years or even 20, you really shouldn't have to ask for ID, but it's not me to say. It's that's what they want now, so I just do it. You have to show identification for everything else. So yes, should be mandatory. Those without ID cards were still able to vote today, but were reminded that they will need identification to vote in the general election on November 6th and given a paper explaining all of those details. In addition, those without an ID are able to get one free of charge at a PennDOT Driver's License Center. Uh, we're going to keep with election news, but real quick, we are getting word that Sean Kelly has been caught and he has been located, uh, that he is in police custody right now. I will have much more on that coming up in just a few minutes. Back to election news tonight, a busy news day here at News 13. All in all, it was a slow day at the poll. Lucky them. And the disappointing turnout was expected, unfortunately. Despite the fact Little showed up to vote, big decisions were up for debate, starting with the Hazleton Area School District, where it was up to voters to decide whether to standardize tax revenue for the public library. News 13 caught up with one man who says that issue is exactly what brought him to vote. And also, we talked with Representative Tara Tuhill, who was making her rounds around the 116th district, and she shared her opinion on why the voter turnout was slow. Well, I think it's just because people don't feel that there's anything, you know, there's not a big presidential contest going on in the primary, uh, so people aren't really coming out. Uh, but the, the library uh, issue is on the ballot, so people should be coming out for that. I went out to vote today was for the library, because I think the libraries are very important to the area, to our children, and that we need to have them continue uh, for education purposes for our children. And that was the most important thing that I went to vote for today. For those who voted yes on the library question, that will fix the percentage of property taxes that the library receives yearly. On the other hand, voting no lets school directors continue to decide how much money the library will receive each year. We'll have much more on the primary election day coming up live at 530. And for those who chose to exercise their right to vote today, well, all that exercising can surely build up an appetite. Lucky for some hungry voters in Freeland, the St. John's Church had the annual Election Day luncheon. Ten different cakes along with hot dogs, halushki, sloppy joes, and tons of other goodies were all on the menu. They were even offering tricky trays and 50-50 raffles for folks to bid on. All of the proceeds from the lunch will now go straight to the church, which runs on limited funds, of course. If you missed out on this delicious lunch, hopefully you didn't miss out on heading to the polls and exercising your right to vote. For now, it looks like the corner of West Broad and Laurel Streets in Hazleton will be the home of a parking garage. Hazleton City officials voted to take over the land through eminent domain after the owners failed to develop the property in what the city calls a timely fashion and also refused money offers from the city to buy the prime property at that busy intersection. But the vote didn't sit well with the owners, the Greco family, who say they have plans and are ready to build there. Here's a portion of what Angelo Greco told council Monday night, hoping to convince members to not touch the land. Do not vote to take this property away from us and the citizens of this city, a property that is priceless, a property that is and always will be a landmark. Voting for taking this property away is actually an aggressive action against the community that is trying to come together right now. You will be destroying growth, 
you will be showing people that it's okay to take things without merit and to take advantage of other people to try to get ahead, to just benefit a few. A project based on a shaky foundation of eminent domain will fail, you will fail, we the people will fail, and Hazleton will lose, and along with it have lost another opportunity and a chance to bring life with it back to the city. Instead of a vibrant city and a connected community, voting to take away this property will create another Me Too lot in the center of a city, a city that has been looking for a future. Greco convinced at least two council members to vote no. Gene Mope and Jack Mundy both voted against the city claiming that corner, but they weren't enough to stop it. The final vote was three to two. Now the city will go ahead with developing a parking garage there. The Grecos presented plans to council and the mayor to develop a vertical farm, which would be built in three phases, featuring a farmer's market, a food co-op, pharmacy, wellness clinic, restaurant, and more. Today, Hazleton decided if they wanted to go on the train to progress or leave the city behind and go backwards, leaving the train of progress to go ahead. Our proposal was not only the vertical farm, but it was a, it was a, a, a vehicle to unify the city, a city that needs to embrace unity for all of us. You don't have to have one without the other. You could have both. But we need that vertical farm as our catalyst through food to bring our people together. First of all, I've said all along, you need the need for the garage, all right? We don't have the need. We are putting the uh, cart in front of the horse. First you get in the need for uh, industry or um, trade, commercial business and whatever, and then you develop the property after you have the need, not the other way around. I think it's absolutely wrong, and I, and I want to warn the other businesses on Broad Street that happen to be in agreement with eminent domain was to say the city's not going to come around at some time and say, we want your property. We can do something better with it and take it off of them. How will they feel? I felt that uh, the Chamber of Commerce was, uh, was in was favor of it. Uh, so was... Um, uh, the downtown business merchants, uh, and there was not anyone that I spoke to that was against it. They just they thought the property's in deplorable condition. They didn't see any future in sight. A lot of it was, it sounded great. I mean, I'd love them to take a property over on uh, uh, Cedar Street uh, next to Posture Pack's garage. As a county owns a property, they want to do their thing, they can do it there. Uh, we can use the property. I mean, again, we're looking for increasing uh, uh, retail space, and perhaps maybe that's bigger than the garage itself. So. I just thought there were more positives than waiting. And we've waited long enough. We didn't see any progress whatsoever at that point. So. We went and approached the Grecos and offered them money right as soon as the building went down. We offered them for the land. Uh, they did not respond to us at all. So uh, they came down about two weeks later with a drawing of now modular buildings put on their property, uh, trying to show that they were going to develop it or whatever, and that's months ago. And right to this point now, they haven't done anything to the property. So we offered them another price, and they didn't respond. So we felt that nobody's going to develop that but us. Now, the Greco property has been vacant for about a year now after the Greco building was demolished last year following various code violations from the city of Hazleton. No word on when the city would get started on construction of that parking garage, but officials say they will proceed with the eminent domain process, taking custody of the property. However, the Grecos can fight that, and the corner controversy in Hazleton could end up in the courts. All right, an update now to our breaking news story. A third bank robbery in the, the greater Hazleton area, this time in the borough of West Hazleton at the Citizens Bank at the corner of McKenna's, McKenna's Corner, I should say, in West Hazleton. Now, earlier today, state police identified 
the suspect in their robbery at the PNC Bank this past Monday in Hazel Township as being 33-year-old Sean Kelly, who is a former MinSec resident and has been uh, living on Chestnut Street in the city of Hazleton. They did go looking for him earlier today. Then the bank robbery occurred at the Citizens Bank uh, at McKenna's Corners in West Hazleton. Now we are being told that Sean Kelly, 33-year-old Sean Kelly, is in police custody. They found him in the area of Alter Streets in the city. Uh, we do know he is in state police custody. He's being transported back to the state police barracks and has been positively identified as the suspect in today's robbery at the Citizens Bank, the PNC Bank robbery on Route 93 in West Hazleton, and also we're being told the bank robbery in the city of Hazleton that happened on Friday at Choice Federal Credit Union. So again, this story keeps developing and we'll continue to bring you the very latest as we get it. But for now, coming up on News 13, with bullets being found in a school just two weeks ago, school administrators are looking into ways to beef up security. We'll have more on that later. And the number is just mind-boggling. Uh, and come next week, those students included in the large number will not be allowed in school if they do not receive state-required immunizations. Jasmine Brooks will have more in this week's Super Segment. Segment, stay with us. Your daily number today for your Pennsylvania winning midday lottery number 026, your big 47799, Quinto 23335, and Treasure Hunt 356, 1528. Good evening, everyone. Here's tonight's social news. A happy 25th wedding anniversary to Albert and Michelle Barnhart. This wish comes from Michelle to Albert. And now for tonight's talk of the town. There will be a chicken barbecue with the New England Fire Company in Tamaqua Saturday, May 19th from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. This is a drive through takeout only. You get a half a chicken, potato, pepper, cabbage, applesauce, a roll, and a drink, all for a donation of only $8. And for tickets or more information, you can call 570-277-6600. And the URS Spring Bazaar. This will be at the URS building on Broad Street in Hazleton, Saturday, May 5th, 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. And on Sunday, May 6th, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. There will be food, auctions, games, a flea market, and much, much more. For more information, you can call 459-9784. And that's tonight's Talk of the Town. News 13 extends our deepest sympathies to the family and friends of these recently departed. Mary Rose Lawrence of Sugarloaf. The arrangements are being handled by the Harmon Funeral Home. Ralph G. Caldwell Jr., formerly of Sugarloaf. The funeral will be held Thursday at 10.30 a.m. from the Harmon Funeral Home. Friends may call Wednesday from 7 to 9 p.m. Regina Gabriel of Hazleton. The funeral will be held Tuesday at 10.30 a.m. from the Firo Funeral Home. Friends may call Tuesday from 9 to 10.30 a.m. Audrey M. Hill of Weatherly. Services will be held Friday at 11 a.m. from the Salem UCC. Visitation will be on Friday from 9.30 to 11 a.m. Josephine M. Sapolsky of Hazleton. The funeral will be held Wednesday at 10 a.m. from the Frank J. Bonin Funeral Home. Friends may call Wednesday from 9 to 10 a.m. Susan Yenchko of Hazleton. The funeral was held today at the Saints Peter and Paul Slovak Lutheran Church and Rose Marie C. Benton, formerly of Hazleton. A massive Christian burial will be held Friday at 10 a.m. from the Church of All Saints. Friends may call Friday from 9 to 10 a.m. Tonight's obituary is often brought to you by the Smilax Floral Shop on 15th Street in Hazleton. Free delivery to all local funeral homes. Call 570-454-0111. And by Mia's. Don't settle for the second best when dining out. Discover Mia's new low-priced dinner menu for 2012. Remember, there's plenty of free gated parking in the Markle Building lot. Find us on the web at MiasRestaurant.com or follow us on Facebook.
For this week's Super Segment, I am here at the Hazleton Area Administration Building with Superintendent of the Hazleton Area School District, Dr. Antonelli, and Mrs. McBride, who is the Chairman of the Nursing Department. First of all, 1,100 students, Dr. Antonelli, still have to get immunized by Monday, and that's a state requirement, is that correct? Correct, that's a state law. If they're not immunized by Monday, we are not allowed by state law to allow them into our school buildings. So we're making an appeal to parents whose children need the immunizations to please do so between now and April 30th, next Monday. And I must say that our nursing department has worked very hard over the past year in sending notices home to students, multiple notices, informing parents that this is a law and it has to be done by April 30th. Dr. Antonelli, this was actually extended this date, is that correct? That's correct, it was extended from April 1st to April 30th. Okay, and 1,100 students. Now you said you're getting to the point where you're calling their homes. Right, <clears throat> excuse my voice, but um, <clears throat> um, what we've been doing is sending out, maybe you can tell, uh, sending out a number of notices, and now what we're doing is calling them down, saying, what is your home number? Because a lot of the, the numbers on the cards are not right, and standing there with the child while we call the parent and let them know. Many parents say they have not gotten the uh, papers from their child. So I ask everybody to ask your child when they come home, check their book bags, ask if they got these in the, um, in the uh, uh, school, if they've gotten these papers from the nurse. Dr. So, Arnold, what can you add to this? I think it's very important that the emergency information cards that are sent home to the parents at the beginning of the school year by the school nurse are kept up to date. As addresses change or phone numbers change, it is important that parents inform the school nurse of such changes, uh, and quite possibly we wouldn't be in this predicament at this point in time. Again, Mrs. McBride, 1,100 students only have until Monday. It's free to get these shots. Right. Where can they do that? They can call the, the Pennsylvania uh, State Health Center. You can dial 1-877-PA-HEALTH. Or um, the Freeland Rural Health Center is in um, down in the Nuremberg area. That is listed in the phone. And also the Freeland Rural Health. Those immunizations at those places are offered by the state, and they are free. So come Monday, what will happen if these students are not immunized? They will not be allowed into our schools. Uh, and quite frankly, uh, if they are truant, it will be treated as an unexcused absence and a, and a truancy. So it is imperative, again, that parents get their children to one of the free immunization clinics and have them immunized before Monday, April 30th. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. This is a serious matter. You want to add something yeah, as well? Um, sometimes, <clears throat> sometimes these shots, they already have them. And all they have to do is get in touch with their, uh, their family medical doctor and just get us the dates. Like they have them, but we don't know they have them. So that's also a big thing. Call your private MD and just find out, do I have the second varicella? If not, then can I schedule it? You know, either way they can do that. Okay, sound good? All right, thank you both so much. For this week's Super Segment, I'm Jasmine Brooks, and I'll send it back to you in the studio. Jasmine, thanks so much. And after a recent discovery of bullets hidden in a bathroom at the ninth grade center on the Hazelton Area School District's high school campus, administrators are tightening up security, and for good reason. In order to keep students as safe as possible, officials at the Hazelton Area School District are looking to take the next step. News 13 spoke with Superintendent of the District, Dr. Francis Antonelli, to see exactly what they have planned. Well, the plans currently are we have metal detectors out on bids. We're awaiting those bids from various vendors. Uh, we do uh, have a very strong interest in metal detectors on our high school campus uh, to be used daily. Uh, we are also partnering with the Pennsylvania State Police on grant money to add a second Pennsylvania State Trooper to this campus, and uh, we are confident that we will secure that money so that we can do so. We are looking at a self-contained schedule for all three buildings, ninth grade, career center, and the high school, which will eliminate the multiple class changes, students walking outside from building to building during the course of the day. Dr. Antonelli tells us the goal is to have the new safety measures in place by the beginning of next year. Because the district is still in the bidding process, a cost could not be given to News 13 at this time for all of those extra safety measures. Before we head outdoors for a check of your forecast, let's check out tonight's creative condition. Actually, let's just stick with that beautiful creative condition tonight for the forecast brought to us by 7th grader Mitchell 
Milbrand from MMI. Thanks so much for sharing with us, Mitchell. And now your 24 hour outlook. It's a cold one for tonight. 32 will be our low. We see a chance of sprinkles, which could turn into some freezing conditions with that low temp. Cloudy skies taking us through to our Wednesday, where flurries are possible in the morning. We'll climb to 53 degrees. Your forecast live at 5 brought to you by Just Windows and much, much more. Call 636-1133 or stop by. They're on First Street in Freeland. Also, Fagley Oil Company, Tamaqua and Hazel Township, also serving some other areas in the greater Hazelton and Schuylkill counties. www.fagleys.com, 1-800-572-4925, the number to call. All right, well, we told you last night about the big announcement. News 13 has now teamed up with Service Electric Cable Vision and KYW News out of Philadelphia to bring our viewers in Luzerne, Carbon, and Schuylkill counties even more news and information each weekday. But it does mean some changes for News 13 viewers. News 13 will now be live from 4 to 5 each weeknight, then back on again 6 to 7. From 5 to 6, viewers can tune into KYW News out of Philly right here on Channel 13. So that's three consecutive of hours of news, weather, sports, and information without changing the channel. And don't forget the first half hour each night is when News 13 and the Standard Speaker team up to bring you the news that's important to you first. Also, News 13 will still be seen at 10 p.m. and 11.30 p.m. each night and again at 10 a.m. the next morning. And for those of you who'd like to watch online, we will still provide all of our newscasts and top stories at ssptv.com. And don't forget to always check out News 13's Facebook page. All these changes will take effect on May 7th, so make sure you spread the word to your family and friends. If you do have any questions or concerns, feel free to shoot us an email here or give us a call at the station. Your Live at 530 is on deck. More on the rest of the serial bank robber here in Hazleton. Stay with us. We're back in two.